Hello, quilting friends. My name is Pam Hultgren Klein, and I would like to welcome you to my sewing table. Today, I would like to introduce all of you to my favorite quilting tool, the Easy Angle. The Easy Angle was invented by Sharon Hultgren, and you guessed it, Sharon is my mom. I've had many friends and colleagues and family members that have said, Pam, could you please do a tutorial reminding us how to use the Easy Angle? And so today, we're going to do exactly that. Let's head to the cutting table. Today, for our demonstration, we're gonna use two and a half inch strips. And as I chose my two and a half inch strips, I like to remember that half square triangles are always gonna show up better if you have a really nice contrast. So we're gonna use my two favorite colors, navy blue and white, all right? So two and a half inch strip, just like you would find on most jelly rolls, that's kind of a common size. Um, we're gonna lay it down on our cutting mat and to begin with, we lay our darker fabric face up and I like to use a line on the cutting mat just as a little bit of a guideline. And then I take my, my white fabric and I'm gonna put my white fabric face down. And of course I love using white on white, but that's always a trick. Give yourself a second to double check and make sure you truly have the right side face down to the darker fabric like that, okay? So then I'm gonna lay it down and I'm gonna try my best to get my top to match all the way across and my bottom to match all the way across. And I'm gonna have just a hair over the vertical line because that allows me to use my easy angle simply as a straight edge and come uh, to the edge right here and give ourselves a clean cut so that we know we got a great beginning to our first half square triangle. Now we begin. When we go to use the easy angle, we start by looking at the easy angle and making sure literally that we can read the words, easy angle. If you can read them, you've got the, the ruler going in the right direction. Now we take the easy angle. I remember that I cut my strip at two and a half inches and I see the two and a half inch right here on my ruler and it has its own little flat top right there. So I'm gonna push that flat top all the way to the edge of my strip where it lays right there. The vertical line of the tool matches the vertical line of the fabric. The flat top matches, goes across the top just for that little bit and the bottom edge goes across there too. When I've got that all set, I hold firmly with, for me, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna fir hold firmly with my left hand, and I'm gonna cut with my right hand at the angle, just like that. And we have our first half square triangle. Now, you don't take them apart, simply keep them together. I'm gonna set them up here because that one's ready for the sewing machine, just as it is. Now, the next thing we do is that we take the easy angle and we're going to pivot or flip it. When we flip it, sometimes we'll say we're flipping it like the page of a book, but it's truly along the diagonal edge. Just do a flip. The bottom left becomes the top right. If you do that, you will still see the numbers look right side up and right towards you. I remember again, I'm doing a two and a half inch strip. So I slide that to the number to the top edge of my fabric strip. I see two and a half and then I look and I notice my diagonal knot line matches. And this is where that little black flag comes into play. It should be hanging below the line of our fabric. And if it's hanging below the line, then that's what's gonna give us our seam allowance. So we're gonna hold this steady and I'm going to cut it one more time, straight up like that. And now I'll take my tool, my easy angle, and I'm going to flip it back again so that I'm ready to do the next one. I have this half square triangle ready to go. I'm gonna add it to my pile to take to the sewing machine. 
Now that we have cut all of our half square triangles, we're sitting at the sewing machine and we're ready to begin sewing them together. Before I begin, I want to do a double check and make sure that I have a true quarter inch seam. I actually use two different methods myself. I have checked, I use a quarter inch foot, which I know the edge of my foot is a quarter inch away from the needle itself. That's going to be a quarter inch. But I also have used a piece of blue painter's tape, which will also give me the quarter inch seam. That make, helps me to ensure that it's going to be right when it's done. Now, I'm going to take all of the pieces, and this might seem interesting to you, but I'm gonna take the pieces and I'm gonna flip them over. And my reason for doing that is because I want to bring the point of my cut easy angle half square triangle into the feed dog first not the blunt end i want the point end first okay so putting the point end first i'm going to set it under the machine sorry under the foot bring my foot down and at the spot where my needle is going to hit i've got the quarter inch seam marked by my painter's tape and the edge of my uh, foot. I have to hold my thread to start for me. And here we go. We'll uh, get from one end to the other and I can't wait for you to see how when I get to the other end, it's gonna be right at that flat end of the triangle that was created by the easy angle. There it is. It ended up right there at that point. And then we get to do chain stitching, which to me saves so much time and thread. I love to chain stitch when I can. So I grab my next set. They still are right sides together because I never took them apart. And I'm just gonna double check and make sure that they're all lined up correctly. I have the point, always point in first and then we'll line it up right there and we just keep going. Once again, I ended up right at that edge that I need to be at. We continue doing that with as many easy angles as you need to and then you're ready for the ironing board. And now that I have my chain of easy angles, I'm going to get them cut apart. So I'll trim that edge down real quickly and cut between them real carefully like that and ready for the iron. When I go to iron, I do follow the principle of iron to the dark if I can. So I'm gonna open them up like I'm opening the page of the, bo of the book towards the dark. And then I'm gonna push my seam opened like that. Uh, carefully. And then one thing I like to do is I'll grab my next one and I'm going to lay it down right on top and I'm going to push my dark fabric toward the seam like that. And uh, it kind of continues to press the one on underneath it as well. Once I have them pressed open, this is the time that I go after the dog ears. Some people try to do it before Personally, I think it's easier to spot now. So I'm gonna take my square and I'm just gonna clip that dog ear and get it out of the way. And I will do this one the same, get it out of the way like that. And then I would love for you to notice this. Now that I've finished sewing my half square triangles using my easy angle, I can check it out and when I measure it carefully, you will see that a half square triangle cut with an easy angle makes a perfect two and a half inch square, which can be placed right next to the square that is two and a half inches and be sewn together as if it were done in a much more difficult way. The easy angle truly is the easy way. So there we have it. Now we just used our easy angle and with our easy angle, we were able to cut multiple 
half square triangles. Once we had those sewn together, we could put them right beside the same size square. And eventually, we end up with some type of a quilt, a wall hanging. This Amish star is actually one of my favorite. And I'm noticing squares and half square triangles are sitting side by side, all done with our easy angle. So friends, I hope you enjoyed our video and I hope you find time to dust off your easy angle.